Hi, welcome to another episode of Project Geospatial. I'm uh, Adam Simmons here at the GeoInt 2021 Symposium in St. Louis, Missouri. I have the pleasure of talking to NGA's Associate CIO, uh, Mark Chatelain. Yes. Uh, can you introduce yourself to our audience and uh, we'll dive a little bit more about your role at NGA? Absolutely. Absolutely. So again, my name is Mark Chatelain. Uh, my current title is the Associate CIO for NGA. I've been a government employee for, gosh, almost 17 years now. Uh, prior to that, I worked in the contractor field, uh, working for a couple of different companies. Uh, my introduction was to the Defense Mapping Agency in 1986. Although I didn't know it was the Defense Mapping Agency at the time, I answered an ad in Seattle Morning News uh, that just said, do you like math? Send us your resume. So I applied for the job and um, they offered me a, a wonderful salary of about $35,000 a year, which was you know, a lot at the time. Um, but they still wouldn't tell me who I was gonna work for, what I needed to do, but I did have to go take a urine test. And I said, what am I gotten myself into? <laughs> so um, to fast forward the clock, I've had a wonderful opportunity supporting the Defense Mapping Agency, NEMA, and the uh, National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Uh, it was a pretty easy decision to move into government employment because uh, I would have the chance to make a difference, uh, to support our, uh, our warfighters, to support all of the things that I had been doing as a contractor, but now I actually got to, to help people make those decisions. And so, uh, again, it's been a phenomenal career so far. And uh, again, uh, I've been the associate CIO for the last, uh, last year now, and, uh, and it's been a great opportunity. For those who don't know, what does that role actually mean? So as the associate CIO, I am responsible for engagements, both with industry as well as our uh, IC partners, our military, from the CIOT standpoint, the chief information officer standpoint. Uh, a law was passed in the 90s called Klinger Cohen, which mandated that every federal agency establish a chief information officer responsible for all of the technology associated with uh, with the agency. And so everything that is technology related has to pass through the chief information officer. Mark Andrus is our chief information officer. And again, I support him as far as uh, doing engagements, policy, uh, audits across our organization, whether it's uh, security audits, financial audits, or uh, IT audits, if you will. And uh, then I have the opportunity also to, to lead a small team that uh, supports Mark in those roles. Excellent. Uh, so with your experience, you've seen the industry grow significantly over the years, right? What does that, what does that mean for you? What, what, how, how, what's that impact over your course of your career? So again, I've seen, um, I've seen things grow, I think, I've seen things change. I don't think that they've expanded as much as they've morphed. Uh, when I say morphed, I mean they've gone from these huge programs. The first program I was involved with was called the Digital Production System. It was basically taking uh, the, the word cartography uh, being uh, hand tooling of maps and actually pushing it into the digital era. Uh, and again, this is back when um, uh, IBM PCs were just being introduced into the world. And so we had mainframe computers, we had workstations and things like that that we were actually trying to implement doing digital production. Uh, but again, these were huge contracts. They were five, 10 years in length to de deliver a capability. So you talk about changes that I've seen. The changes are we deliver things now in three months. We give our analysts the capability that they need right now uh, on their desktops in about three months. And it goes through the entire process of requirements, uh, development, testing, uh, certification, and putting it into the hands of the users. And so, so the timelines have shrunk. The, uh, the, the amount of contracts as far as the dollar figures has actually shrunk because of the fact that we're doing things in small bites and small pieces. If something doesn't work, we've only lost three months, we haven't lost five years. Does that uh, shorten timelines allow you to do so much more? Or as you said, the industry's more changed and morphed, uh, not quite expanded. So can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure, what it allows us to do is be flexible. And again, our, our tech strategy that has been published in the last year or so, uh, really focuses on building with the customers. So instead of finding out what the customers need, spending two to three years developing something and then giving it back to them, uh, their first reaction is that isn't what I want. 
So what we're doing now is we're building with the customers and we're building with the customers in that short three month time frame, so that we take their input, we have them watch us and participate in that development. I almost called it call it paired development where the customer or the user sits right next to the developer and watches every single thing that is done so that they know that they're going to be getting something that's useful. Um, but again, like I said, what happens is in that three month period, if we get it wrong, we haven't lost that much. So we've reduced the risk. And uh, again, uh, we've only uh, uh, failed at a small amount of money and a small amount of time as opposed to a huge uh, long-term failure, if you will. Now, uh, refocusing on the uh, GWINT Symposium here, uh, how many symposiums have you been to personally? I've probably been to 10 symposiums. Uh, again, I started off uh, as a contractor uh, supporting setting up the technology in NGA's booth uh, years and years ago at some of the very first uh, GEOINTS. Uh, it was exciting, uh, long days, hard work in getting the technology set up, getting it operating, and uh, moved from there into actually doing demonstrations of technologies. Uh, GEOINT Visualization Services was, was one of the first things I had the opportunity to demonstrate on how NGA was implementing something called Google Earth way back in the year 2007-2008. So what did, it, what did it mean to having a uh, convention or, or a symposium like this as opposed to not having anything at all before? Or, did, or was there uh, components of a symposium to collaborate with industry before? The before GEOMA came about, we used to have something called the, the affectionately called the NUC or the NSG Users Conference. And again, it was an opportunity for users of GEOINT, the military, the rest of the IC, and contractors to participate and come together and talk about where NGA is going, uh, or NEMA at the time is going, uh, with their technology, the programs of the future, and things like that. So it was a one or two day event that everybody got together. Um, it was not as large as this, we didn't have a, a a show floor where you had an opportunity to interact with industry as much. But again, I think it was uh, almost the beginnings of what is now the GEOINT conference. How much of the activities happen here influence the decisions uh, in, in a role such as yourself? Oh, there's a there's, uh, countless number of things that, have, that influence what we do. Um, because of the fact it's an opportunity for us to uh, meet with industry, to understand where they're coming from, to understand uh, some of the issues that they're having in working with the government. And it uh, basically gives industry a chance to talk to key senior leadership within the agency and, and give us their opinions. Uh, it doesn't uh, usurp the program managers that we have involved or anything like that, but it is an opportunity for senior leadership from companies to engage with NGA and for us to hear exactly what's going on. Not to dive into specific companies or anything like that, but are there any interesting technologies you've seen in the last couple of years at GeoInt and uh, or that have stood out you in in in, in recent events? Absolutely. So some of the technologies again, um, we've taken a, a couple of years off from GeoInt, and so it's amazing when you fast forward from 2019 to 2021, uh, some of the technologies that, that, that have been developed. Uh, again, without going into some of the companies, we have seen some phenomenal advances in um, automatic target recognition. We've seen phenomenal advances in um, pulling imagery and pulling data out of imagery and then packaging it together and then delivering it to an analyst as opposed to the analyst having to actually manual do, manually do all of that work. It really uh, bleeds into one of the director's uh, key tenets of uh, exploiting artificial intelligence and machine learning. And we really begin to see that now. We haven't seen that in the past. Absolutely. Uh, so where would you like to see the industry focus going forward? Wow, that's a tough question. Um, I think probably the main thing to do, and it goes back to what Dr. Dixon said in her speech. She talked about, number one, bring me things that have been tested. So that's the first thing. I'd like to see industry not necessarily test whatever they're developing, um, you know, testing it fully ready for deployment, but again, put a lot of uh, thought behind how things are tested, how things are evolved, so that when we see them at NGA, we can begin to say, we have confidence in that this is gonna work. It's not just a uh, 
one data set type application, but it's been tested across the broad sets of data applications. And then the next thing, make sure it's cyber secure. Uh, cyber security from our DNI, our President of the United States, all the way through our agency. Uh, things have got to be cyber secure. They have to have built, have that built in from day one. So those are the two things. Again, Dr. Dixon put it very well. Excellent. Uh, how about, can you talk to him, are you able to talk on any, we'll call it struggles or, or hurdles that industry and government both are trying to overcome in the coming years? Uh, and you may have touched on just one, the cybersecurity concerns, right? Uh, but are there any technology hurdles that we're still trying to, uh, we're still struggling with? It's funny you use the word hurdles. I was always thinking of it, you know, we've got, it, it's almost like that, that hurdle race that you're going down and you cross one and then you've got to look forward to the next one. And you really can't worry about that one you just stumbled over. No. You just need to move forward. I think cyber, cyber security is our next hurdle that we have to get over. Uh, with all of the events that have happened over the last couple of years associated with exploiting systems and things like that, uh, we've got to get over that. Um, you probably may know it, but NGA has, over the last two years since the pandemic, we have you moved a huge amount of our work to the unclassified side um, because it enabled our workforce to be productive at home while we rode out the pandemic. And so um, we went from 300 people on our unclassified network on a daily basis to over 10,000 people within a uh, four or five week period. Mm -hmm. Making a shift like that is huge. Um, we've been kind of the, the envy of the IC. They've looked at us and said, how did you do that? What did you do? And then they're implementing those types of things. But again, in order to move to the unclassified uh, domain, we needed to take very solid cybersecurity uh, precautions associated with that. So I think that's one of our biggest hurdles. Again, the next one is probably being able to develop software with our customers and making sure that they're included in the development process and that they're not left behind. Uh, we have to make sure we spend the time associated with uh, teaching them what methodology, methods we use and then ensuring that they're brought along for the ride. Well, thank you very much, sir, for your amazing insights. Do you have any final words of inspiration to young professionals or uh, even, even folks in the, uh, in, in the government right now who are just starting their careers uh, on, on what to, any, any, any advice for them? Oh, absolutely. Um, again, I, I, I really insist that you, you take a chance. Uh, you take a look at something that you really have a passion for. Uh, you may not have all of the qualifications, but if you've got some of the qualifications to, to move into those fields, whether it's a, a STEM degree, whether it's a GIS degree, uh, give it a chance. Uh, find something that motivates you, that you have a passion for, and then just begin to reach out. Uh, reach out to folks that are in the industry already. Uh, seek out those mentors, even if that mentor session is only an hour long. At least take something away from that. All right. Well, thank you, sir, for joining us and uh, giving us your amazing insights here at GEOINT 2021. I look forward to hearing more, uh, especially six months from now, right? Absolutely. Uh, and we'll catch everybody next time. Thank you very much.